Lord, you reign forever your descent. I got my truth in my mind. Every man say, you lifted me and gave me a song. I got my truth in my mind. Every man say, oh, Colombian, yeah. The workshop. Please, and all of Jesus, can we please stand on our feet as our Father takes over? Please stand as our Father takes over. Praise the Lord. I say, Praise the Lord. Let's take this chorus together. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Johnny, His mercy never comes to an end. Oh, yes. Always great is the goodness. Oh, great is I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. Oh Lord, you have been so good. Hasn't he been good to you? He has so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you This third one, you are going to sink it with confusion on the basis of what we are teaching today. Do something new in my Wonderful, do something wonderful in my life. You are going to say after me, I am a child of God. I have a father who is in heaven. I am what my father is. I am created to be a winner. I am created to be holy. I am created to behave like God. I am a child of God. I have not manifested my potential yet. Shout and say, my star will shine. Every gift that God has deposited in me, I will manifest. Shout and say, I am not poor. I am rich. I'm not a failure. I am a success. I am not ordinary. I am supernatural. I carry the Spirit of God. I have the grace of God in my life. Shout and say, I can do all things. I can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. Can I hear loud hallelujah from you as you sit down? Please be seated. Father, we are grateful, O oh Lord, for the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. Thank you so much as we talk about your grace today. We ask Heavenly Father that you teach us yourself your word. Thank you for the confession. 
I pray that your greatness will begin to manifest in the life of these children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like Joshua, O oh Lord, they will enter their promised land. Like Joshua, they will have the power to stop the sun and the moon. After this conference, nothing will stand before you and prevail in Jesus' name. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I greet you in the name of the Lord. I will be talking to you today on something very important. Something that we call the fundamental part of Christianity. So many churches everywhere, so many forms of Christianity everywhere, but the lives of people are not being transformed. Those who know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I greet our fathers in the Lord, the Lord bishops and the clergy who are here seated in this group. My dear brethren, it is by their fruit we shall know them. We are built up as a person of capacity. You are built up as a person under the grace of God. But one thing about God that people don't understand is that there are two sides of God. The God of love is the same judge of all men. The God who created heaven is still the same God who created hell for those who will go there. Our God is no respecter of persons. And so for you to be called a child of God, you must manifest like Jesus Christ. And the theme of this, our Joshua generation this year, is manifesting the what? Manifesting what? Praise God. Look at the text that is chosen for the theme. Romans chapter 8, from verse 19 to 22. I will be talking to us on this subtopic understanding and walking in the grace of God. You need to understand the grace of God first, then we will move on to how do you walk in this grace of God. This is the essence of our workshop today. But let us look at the Bible I read from verse 19. For the honest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The expectation of the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What this first verse is telling us here is that God created the heavens and the earth. He created all things. In theology, we call it ex nihilo, out of nothing. Let there be light, and there was light. Everything God wanted to do, he spoke them into existence. Even healing is spoken into existence. He sends forth his word and the word healed them and delivers them from all their destructions. So there is power in the word of God. But when God was creating man, he didn't speak man into existence. He knew that God is in Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you see the three of them every stage of life. At the point of creation, in the beginning, God, that's the Father. And then the Holy Spirit moved over the darkness and the chaos before the world was created. That's the Holy Spirit. And then he spoke the word, creative word of God. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 to 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. For all things were made by him and nothing was made without him that has been made. In Colossians chapter 1 from 13 to 18, he said he is the visible image of the invisible God, for by him all things were made on earth, in, on, in heaven, principalities and thrones and powers and dominions, all things were made by him and for him. Jesus was the one that God commanded to create the world. Verse 14 tells us that and the world became flesh and dwelt among us. So this Jesus we are talking about, whose resurrection we are still basking in his glory, was the creator of the universe. Colossians say he created the world. John says he created the world. So you can see that even in Genesis, God the Father was there, God the Son was there, God the Holy Spirit was there. When Jesus Christ came, 
during his dispensation to be baptized. He was the son to be baptized. The Holy Ghost came like a dove and was present, and the voice of the Father was also there to say, this is my beloved son, I am well, in whom I am well pleased. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you here? So God Almighty, he made a call. He said, come. He was, he was calling some people. He said, come, let us, plural, make man in our own image. In the image of God we were made. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. If your teacher taught you that creation was by evolution, tell him he is a big liar. You could not have been a product of evolution. You were made in the image of God. You are made in the image of God. And when God molded us, he molded the body, he brought in the bones, he molded the eyes, he made the kidney, he made the heart, he made all these things, all the liver, he created the blood. Up to today, nobody can manufacture blood. You can only borrow from one person to give to another. He said, now I have made man. And he breathed into man, and man became a living sin, a living soul. So the spirit of God is in all. So every person is a combination of the physical body, is a, is a combination of the soul, is the combination of the spirit and so you have the trinity there you were created in the image of god when god created the world everything was okay he was coming in the cool of the night to stay with adam and when adam sinned he had to be driven out of the garden of eden and we became vagabonds we became carriers of causes we became bearers of the anger of god originally we were made in the image of god all the powers that God had, he gave to us. He called Adam and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and have dominion. You were created to have dominion, people of God. I want you to leave this conference in Joshua generation, bearing the power of God and the image of God. You are a child of God. The child of a dog will be a dog and behave like a dog. The child of a lion will be a lion and will behave like a lion. And so the child of God is a God and will behave like God. Psalm 82 verse 6 wrote, I say ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high God. Don't mind that you die like ordinary human beings. Come on, say heaven is God. Can I hear you louder? I am also a small God like him. I shall manifest. Creation is waiting for me to recover my identity. Creation is waiting for me to recover my authority. I am a child of God. Creation is waiting for your manifestation. They can't do it. The dog can't do it. The goat can't do it. The boss can't do it. The crocodile can't do it. Only the children of God can do it. Heaven was made for us. The Garden of Eden was made for us. And when God created us, He created us well, sinless, but He gave us free will to make up our mind on any matter. And for whatever choice we make, we are accountable unto God. I said before you, life and death, heaven and hell, light and darkness, you have to make a choice. Whatever is your choice will determine your eternal destination. What do you call grace? Grace has been defined as the unmerited favor that man receives from God, not because we deserve it, but because God himself is a gracious God. Grace is a characteristic of Almighty God. Oh, I love a story. A story about Moses who had audacity. Moses was leading the Israelites through the wilderness and going on to the promised land. At a point in time, they got to the mountain of Sinai and Moses had to go up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and he saw God. He was able to see God. He was talking with God. God was telling him about everything you found from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And this man said to God, I want to see you. God said, nobody can see my face and live, but I will hide you behind the cleft of a rock here and I will make my goodness to pass before you, and you will see my backside, you will not see my front. Hello? Whether the front or backside, he saw God. He saw God. And because he saw God, there was the shining of his face like the sun. And on the basis of that, when you are in an encounter with Almighty God, there shall be a transformation in your life. That transformation is going to break a difference from you. I speak unto every one of you today. After this particular encounter, your face will shine like the glory of the sun. The devil will see you and disappear. 
Problems will see you and disappear. Sickness will never have any room in your body. Whatever you lose shall be loose. Whatever you bind shall be bound. Everybody will know you have encountered God. Grace is favor from God we do not enjoy. That is a general grace. All of us are here, whether sinner or believer, we are enjoying the sunshine, we are enjoying the air, we are enjoying the rainfall, we are enjoying all the air that we are allowed to breathe. That is the general grace of God He has given to us. You plant a seed, it grows, germinates, and gives you many more in return. That's why you are able to feed, you are not starving. God has given us all things, things that money cannot buy. That is the general grace of God. So when Moses met with God, Moses said, I want to see you. God said, you will see my backside. I will pass by you. You will see my back and I will proclaim my name before you. And the Lord proclaimed his name. The Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the everlasting Father. He is the one who created the whole of the universe. And what did they say about him? He's merciful, he is gracious, and he is long-suffering. He is merciful, he is gracious, he is long-suffering. And his mercies endure forever up to a thousand generations. That is grace. The grace of God is the blessing you receive from God, not because we deserve it, but simply because it is his nature just to be good. It is his nature for him to be able to forgive. It is his nature to give us all good things. Brethren, the grace of God is the favor of God. The grace of God is the mercy of God. It is by the mercy of the Lord we are not consumed. The Bible tells us that if God is to regard iniquity, nobody will stand. Common telling lies can take a person to hell. If God did not show us mercy, there can be no way we can ever say we are going to make it to heaven. Not at all. If not God that shows us mercy, you cannot achieve anything in life. It's not of he who will it or he who run it, but it's of the Lord who shows mercy. The battle is not because we are strong. The race is not because we are the fastest. It is the Almighty God who gives us the grace to trust in Him and to achieve whatever we are. You may be the most brilliant person. That does not mean you are going to be a success in life. The person who is the weakest in life may be the person who is going to become the leader tomorrow. Is the grace of God. He exercises it in such a way that He takes His decision and He makes us what we are. That's why Proverbs says, do not trust in your power. Don't trust in your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and he shall order your step. Trust not in man. Woe to he that puts his trust in man. Our trust shall be in the Lord. The grace of God, favor of God, the grace of God, mercy of God, the grace of God is the gift of God. He says that when he ascended into heaven, he rained gifts unto man. The Bible says, what do you have you did not receive? We receive everything from the Almighty God. Everybody shout, grace of God. Whatever you need as a miracle today, you are receiving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God will be sufficient for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of God is so important that Apostle Paul, whenever he wrote letters to the churches in Philippi, in Galatia, in Thessalonica, in Rome, and in Colossae, he will end with a benediction, which we have already started using now. Can we all say the grace together, everybody? Lovely. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Do you all be with us now and forever more. Can I hear you amen to that? Grace is so important that it is the concluding prayer for every prayer you may have offered to God. Because when you pray and we say amen, it simply means may God answer it. May it be approved by the Lord. So grace is the one that runs up all your prayer. It is the grace of God. It is the deliverance of God. The grace of God is the deliverance of God. When enemies come against you like a flood and the Lord raises a standard against them. When enemies come against you and they want to fight you, you have no weapon, you have no gun, and God fights for you, it is the grace of God. Every form of victory comes from God. All successes come from God. The grace of God is the providence of God. He gave you money, He gave you food, He gave you power to eat, He gave you power to sleep and to wake up. If God says we will not wake up, can we call it with God? We can't call it with God. So grace is the providence of God. That was what Jesus was saying. 
do not have anxiety. What will I eat? What will I wear? Anything you are asking for, the Lord Almighty will provide for you more than that. He said, look at the lilies and see how God has taken care of them. He said, look at the birds of the sky. They don't go to work, yet they all eat. And even the hairs on your head, they are all numbered. So grace is mercy of God, favor of God, the help of God, the deliverance of God, the provision of providence of God. This is what we call the grace of God. It is in the nature of God to give us His grace. Anytime we make ourselves the children of God, He gives us grace. But unfortunately, man disobeyed God, man committed sin, and God withdrew His presence from us. He withdrew His grace from us. Even though we committed sin, God did not totally withdraw the grace from us. He was able to bring about His grace in one generation to the other. The greatest that God did was to die for the sins of man. Hear me, everybody. When we committed sin, God gave the sentence, the day you commit this sin, you shall die. So death came into the world through Adam, and man began to die. We were not supposed to die. We were made for eternity. Even after the fall of Adam, Methuselah lived for 900 years. We were made to live for very many years. But even though our body may die, the Spirit of God in us does not die. It is going to live forever and ever. When the person dies, the Spirit will jump out and go back to God. The soul of man, which is your real you. When you are sleeping at night, you sleep on your bed, you dream, you see your real self coming out. You walk, you do a lot of things in your dream. When your body was not leaving the bed, your real you was going out. The same face, the same identity. Somebody running in the dream will wake up sweaty. Even though your physical body didn't leave your bed, the real you was the one that was walking. So when we die, it is that soul, that real us, that will appear before God in judgment. And the greatest grace that God has given to us is because of the death that leads us to hell, God says, no, I don't want man to go to hell anymore. Only a sinless blood can pay for a sinful man. Since there was no sinless blood, Jesus had to come to pay for it himself so that we will not go to hell. And so the greatest grace of God was that Jesus Christ came to the world and he died for us on the cross of Calvary. He carried all our sins and on the third day he rose again. The gospel we preach is a simple gospel. The summary of the gospel is in John chapter 3 verse 16. I want all of us to say it together. John chapter 3 verse 16, say it aloud. For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish going to hell but have what? Everlasting life in heaven. So that is the summary of the grace. Grace is a gift. It's not because we deserve it. It is God himself who gives us this particular grace. And on the cross of Calvary, hear me, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ said, it is finished. What did he finish? His agenda, his agenda, his manifesto. When he started, he came into the temple and he opened the book of Isaiah. You will find it in the book of Luke chapter 4. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Hear me. This is the essence of Christian ministry. Many, many churches that are shouting things that are not the important thing, they are not getting it right. Christianity is a comprehensive package. Jesus has given us a manifesto. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. He has anointed me. You must be the anointed of the Lord to suffer. The power not by mine is by the spirit of the Lord, says the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me, number one, to preach good tidings to those who are poor. Number two, to heal those who are broken hearted. Many are committing suicide, many are hopeless, many are jobless, many are having their broken marriages, and people are turning the other side, some are going to the devil. I have come to heal those who are broken hearted. Number three, I have come to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. A new revolution, a new dispensation, a new order. All things have gone away, all things become new.
bring light into darkness, bring healing to those who are sick. That was the third manifestation of Jesus Christ. The third manifesto, he said, I have come to set the captives free. Demonic captivity, physical captivity. All those in prison have come to give them liberty. Jesus Christ has come to make us fight for the justice that is in the world, injustice in the world. William Wilberforce rose alone. He went to the British Parliament and said we must put a stop to slavery. That was somebody fighting for liberty. Mary Slessor came to Calabar and said no more killing of twain. That was putting an end to slavery. Jesus came and come for justice and have come to turn their ashes into beauty. Ashes come when the wood is totally burnt out. Any life that is completely ruined by the devil, any hopeless life, the Lord will give you new life in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I've come to transform people's life, to turn their ashes into beauty. Number six, I have come to remove the spirit of heaviness, spirit of fear, and give them a garment of praise. Can I hear hallelujah? hallelujah. Number seven, he said, I have also come to raise people who are oaks of righteousness, mighty trees of holy people, holy people, a holy people, giants for God, Joshua's for God. That's what God says I have come to do. And after that, he said, I have come to repair all the waste of many generations. Nigeria is a country that used to be beautiful. Young ones, Nigeria was a country that was very beautiful. Nigeria was a country where the Naira was stronger than the dollar. The Nigeria was a country where with 5,000 Naira, you could buy a big old 504 car. With 1,800 Naira, you could buy a Volkswagen car. With 30 Naira, you could fly to New York and come back. Nigeria was a country where you could sleep and open your door and nobody will disturb you. You are selling things, people will buy and put money and go their way. You are not there, you will meet your money there. Nigeria was a country where people had the fear of God. Nigeria was a country where homes were home and great people were produced. Nigeria was a country where corruption was not tolerated at all. In those days, in every village, if a thief was caught, the thief would be paraded all over the town. People would be shouting, Ole, Ole, Ole. Nobody wanted them to spread the name of their family. A good name was better than silver and gold. That was Nigeria of yesterday. It is no longer Nigeria today. Nigeria has changed today. But Jesus said, I have come to repair all the wasted generation of yesterday. I am praying for you, all of you who are here today, you will repair Nigeria in the name of Jesus. I say you will be the one to solve the problem of Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ. So, my dear people of God, when Jesus said it is finished, what he said here is the agenda I have set for myself, the healing of the nation, the salvation of soul, it is finished. There shall be no more barrier between man and God. In the olden days, the high priest would come to the temple. We go to the Holy of Holies only once in a year to make sacrifices for the people. Inside the Holy of Holies was the Ark of God's Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant, there was a mercy seat where God will show mercy. Grace, mercy, grace. So the high priest was to make offering once in a year for everybody. But when Jesus died, the curtain of the Holy of Holies was cut asunder. You have access to God. When you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are right there in the presence of Almighty God. This is grace. You can talk to God. That's why the Bible says, we do not have a God we cannot approach. We do not have a God who is intolerant. We have a God who sees our Father, our Father who is in heaven. We have a God we can call upon. We have a God we can discuss with. Our God says, come, let us raise it together. When he was going to distress Sodom and Gomorrah, ah, I cannot do this without telling my friend Abraham. He consulted Abraham. Abraham was negotiating. Will you kill Sodom and Gomorrah? If there are 40, if there are 30, if there are 50, he was negotiating with God. Our God is an intimate God. Now, God does not dwell in the temple. He dwells in your body. You are the temple of the Father. You are the temple of the Son. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I want you to ruminate on that. I want you to reflect on that. As you are here, you are a temple of the Father. He that created the world lives in you. You are the temple of the Lord Jesus. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings lives in you. And you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You carry the Holy Trinity. That's the reason why creation is waiting for you to manifest. 
And when Jesus gave that power to the apostle, he said, All power, all authority have been given to me by the Father in heaven and on earth. I have given you that authority. I have given you the power to tread upon the serpent, upon the scorpion, and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies do you any harm. He said, You are seated above principalities and powers. You are seated in heavenly places. You are not ordinary. You are children of God. The grace of God and the blessings we receive from God. David got it very well. He broke it down. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Number one, he forgave your sin. That's grace. Other religions don't have it. They don't have forgiveness of sin. He died on the cross. He forgave us our sins. Even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. He even gave us the power to forgive sin. He said for the ministers of God, any sin you forgive is forgiven. Anyone you repent is repaid. For God has given us forgiveness of sin. If you didn't forgive me your sin, you go to hell. If you didn't forgive me my sin, I will go to hell. That is grace of God. He forgave my sins, number one. He heals all my diseases, number two. He is the healer. I am the Lord that healed thee. He forgave all my sins. He healed all my sicknesses. Number three, he fills my mouth with two things. I can eat. I can digest. I have power to eat. Number four, he crowns me with his loving kindness and tender mercy. Loving kindness, the kind love of God. Loving kindness. Kindness given out of love and the tender mercy of God. He gives you his tender mercy. That's why you are still alive today. That is why you are going on the journey, you come back. That is why a thousand are falling by your side, ten thousand by your right. He did not come near you. He comes with loving kindness and tender mercy. And he says, he redeems your life from sudden destruction. How many witches came against you? How many enemies came against you? How many of them you did not even know? But God gave you victory for them. That is the grace of God. And he renews your youth like that of an ego. This is the grace of God. The benefits from God, the help from God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the provision of God, not because of merited or merited favor that we get from God. Hello? This grace is not for everybody. It is discretionary. It is discretionary. The potter will make a vessel for honor. It will also make vessel for dishonor. The vessel you use to eat on the dining table is not the vessel you use in the toilet. One is for honor, one is for dishonor. Only God knows how to distribute grace. But we thank God today, we are enjoying the grace of God. And you will enjoy the grace of God all the days of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear a louder amen? Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. Who can challenge me? That's grace. Abel gave a sacrifice to God. Cain gave a sacrifice to God. He accepted the sacrifice of Abel. He rejected the sacrifice of Cain. That is the grace of God. King Nebuchadnezzar said, God reigns in the affairs of men. He knows how to do whatever he likes among the armies of heaven. He can enthrone, he can dethrone, and nobody can pressure him and say, what are you doing? That is the grace of God. When God chose Saul to be king of Israel, he was looking for lost donkeys of his father. He came to Samuel, sir, we are looking for the donkeys of my father. And Samuel said to him, the donkeys have been found. God is a king, and he anointed him king. He poured oil on him, he began to prophesy. People saw him and said, ah, ah, he saw also one of the sons of the prophet. Grace found Saul. Rahab was a harlot. She was a harlot. And Ruth was a Moabitess, not an Israeli. When you look at Matthew chapter 1, where the genealogy of Jesus Christ was written, you can see there that through these two people, the harlot and the non-Israeli, Jesus Christ came out of there. David became king because of the grace of God. Samuel was asked to go to the family of Jesse. 
He was looking at all the elder brothers and God rejected them one by one. And they said, is there no other child? And the father said, there is only one left. He's the last one in the family. He is not to be reckoned with. He's not even a candidate at all. He is in the bush. And Samuel said, we will not see it until he come. And as soon as he came, the glory of the Lord was upon him. The last one in the family was made the king of Israel. God will promote you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph was not the eldest of the father's children. His father loved him. He was the second to the last born. And he had a dream that all the brothers are going to bow down to him. They hated him for his dream. They sold him into bravery. You have a dream. I want you to shout and say, I have a dream. I cannot hear you. Do you have a dream? Your dreams shall be fulfilled. You will rule your world. You will be great in life. International doors will be opened unto you. What your parents could not achieve, you will achieve. You will fix Nigeria. You will become president. You will be the governors. You will be the generals. You will be the billionaires. Shout and say, I have a dream. I will be great in life. I will make it in life. I shall be the head and not the tail. I will not suffer. I will not be poor. I will not bear. I will prosper. In the name of Jesus. And I hear believe in Amen. God distributes grace according to his own way. Yet God, I love you, so I hate. Who can pressure me? Hello? The grace of God is not to be taken for granted. That is another section of divine grace. I've told you that grace is discretionary by God. You are fortunate, brethren, that you have God to call upon. You are fortunate you know who you are. You are fortunate that God knows you. You are fortunate that your names are in the book of life. You are fortunate you can pray to God that answers will come. You are fortunate that God has given you the power to do and undo. Jesus said to the disciples, I've given you all the power, and these signs shall follow every child of God who believes in me. In my name, they will speak in new tongues. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, they will raise the dead. In my name, if they make mistake and take poison, it will not hurt them. That's the grace of God. He has given you this power because you are a child of God. But don't take the grace for granted. That is why this topic on grace is being taught today because many Pentecostal churches are turning things upside down. They are turning theology upside down. They are misinterpreting the Bible, turning it upside down. Many people are saying what the Bible did not say about grace of God. I will come to that shortly. As loving as God is, He is a no-nonsense God. Our God is no respecter of persons at all. This same God, who is a loving Father, this same God, who sent His Son to die, this same God, who delivered the Israelites from Egypt, this same God, who gave them manna, this same God, who performed miracles, He is an angry God, for the sinners. He is a loving God for his children. He is an angry God for the sinners. He doesn't hate us as sinners. He hates the sin in us. And as long as we sin, we are children of the devil. When you are a child of God, you are no longer a child of the devil. You are a child of God. All things are passed away. All things become new. That is the identity of the child of God. You are special people. You are not ordinary people. Remember this. If you will not remember anything, you are the temple of God the Father, temple of the Son, temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, you are carrying the Trinity. Wherever you are, angels of God are giving instruction to keep watch over you, so you will not strike your foot against any stone. Grace has another side. He is a God who does not tolerate sin. His eyes cannot behold iniquity. He judges sin. And it doesn't matter who is guilty, he will punish whoever. I will give you examples. He created the whole world, but when sin was too much, 
he brought water and destroyed everybody at the time of Noah. He asked Noah to make an ark and he brought in animals and his own family in there. The church of God is the ark of Noah today. Destruction is coming for the world. There is rebellion by the people of the world. Everywhere they are rebelling against God. Russia, China, communism. They say there is no God. They say there is no God. They don't believe in God. America, England, Europe, they talk about secularism. You don't need God. No more prayer in school. No more prayer at home. No more wedding in church. No more respect for human beings. You can do abortion. You can kill your child. You can sleep with an animal. You can sleep now with man, woman with woman. People are rebellious against God. So God says, I regret I made man. He destroyed everybody. Grace was withdrawn. Everyone came. So if anybody tells you that Christians are the only ones going to heaven and they're asking you, do you mean all the other religions, billions and billions of them, are they going to hell? Yes, sir. Are they going to hell? Yes, ma. Hell is bigger than this world. The nation that forget God will be thrown into hell. Hell has been enlarged to take more people. Paganism in Africa. People are against God. They are ending up in hell. The judgment of God will fall upon them. Remember, the loving God was the one that destroyed the whole world. The same loving God. Number two, when Moses disobeyed God, this same Moses, who was a deliverer, this same Moses, who saw God face to face, this same Moses, who delivered them from Pharaoh, this man that brought plagues from heaven, this man that parted the Red Sea, this man that brought manna, this man that got the handwriting of God in the Ten Commandments, when he disobeyed God, God said to Moses, you have labored for this land, you will see the land, you will not enter into it. If God could do that for Moses, he will do it to any sinner. I pray, all of you who are here, you will enter the promised land in the name of the Lord Jesus. God said to Eli, your children shall be priests forever in Israel. But when he didn't train his children very well, and the children were misbehaving, God said, I withdraw my promise, I withdraw my, my grace, give it to you. Your children will no longer be priests for me. Because you didn't bring up your children in the way of the Lord. Grace can be withdrawn. Saul was made the king of Israel. When he disobeyed God, God said to him, Obedience is better than sacrifice, and to hearken to God is better than the fat of ram. God said, I have denied you and your children forever from being kings over Israel. David took over from him. Grace can be withdrawn. There used to be a servant of Elisha. When he went and took all the things that uh, he, Elisha rejected from Naaman to Lepa, what happened to Gehazi? He was supposed to be the one to take over the power of Elisha as he took over from Elijah, but he became a leper and grace was withdrawn from him. Judas Iscariot was one of the twelve. He also performed miracles when the apostles were sent to perform miracles, but because of greed, he sold his master. He denied Jesus Christ and he committed suicide. Grace was withdrawn from him. Israelites were the people of God, but God sent them into exile. Grace was withdrawn from him. I pray for you that the grace of God will never be withdrawn from your life in the name of Jesus. Grace is conditional. If you obey the commandment of your God, this blessing will follow you and overtake you. But if you disobey the commandments of your God, Instead of blessings, causes will follow them and overtake them. So the choice of grace is yours, my dear brethren. That is the conditional nature of grace. So nobody should come and tell you, once you are saved, you are saved forever. That God does not see your sin. That grace is an umbrella. He doesn't see your sin. It sees only you. It sees what Jesus has done for you. It is a life from the kingdom of heaven. Ezekiel tells us, if a person has been righteous all his or her life and suddenly goes into sin and dies, all the righteousness will not be remembered. If a person has been unrighteous, sinner, fornicator, adulterer, liar, 
murderer, kidnapper, and suddenly accepts Jesus Christ and dies, all the sin will not be remembered anymore. I can describe it in this way. A man's life is recorded. Your sin today, they are recorded. Revelation says, and the books shall be opened. The thoughts of your heart, they are written down. The words of your mouth, they are written down. The actions, they are written down. But when you sin, there is a record in heaven. Look at me, for example. If I sin today, 1,000 times, total sin is 1,000. I sin tomorrow 2,000 times, my total sin becomes 3,000. If I sin next year 1 million, my total sin becomes 1 million and 3,000. And the heavy load of sin is on me. And I know I am on the way to heaven. Why is this the express way? Many are going there. Narrow is the way that the righteous people go. Only few find it. Talk, let's go there. And I come to Jesus Christ. I come to Jesus with all my record. He collects the calculator from my hand. All my sins so far, 1,300,000. And Jesus said, I have died for you. I have paid all these prices. Give me the calculator. He looks at the total. And the prices times zero. What is the answer? What is the answer? All your sins, I will remember them no more. You become a new creature. When you are baptized, you die to sin. When you come out of the water, you resurrect a new life. You are a new person. Things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Something new is happening to us. That is the grace of God. A new heart and a new spirit he gives unto us. That is what we call born again. Born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The friends I used to have, I have them no more. There is a great change when I'm born again. This is the grace of God, of salvation. We have somebody to run to. We have a God to cry to our Father. We have a God to struggle with. We have a God to throw help from, from heaven. This is the grace of God. And this grace, it comes in different ways. Number one, it is the grace of God that gives us salvation. What did Paul say in Romans? The flesh is fighting the spirit. The things I want to do, I can't do. The evil thing I don't want to do is what I find myself doing. There is a war in my body. The spirit and the flesh, they are fighting. But thanks be to God. I am saved not by the works of righteousness. All your righteousness is like feeding grass before God. Feeding rags. They don't amount to anything. You need the grace of God. You need God to pay the price for your salvation. And so Paul says, thanks be to God. Now we are saved not by works, but by the grace of God. Lest anybody should boast. We are saved by the grace of God. Not by our own merit, but because somebody died for us. Somebody paid the debt we couldn't pay. That's the essence of grace. Grace gives us salvation. Hear me, brethren. You are saved by grace. Through the justification of your faith. When you have faith in Jesus, grace comes to you. It is the faith you have that justifies you to draw grace. And that grace will give you salvation. That's what we call justification by faith and salvation by grace. Romans chapter 10, from verse 10 to 13. Paul wrote, if you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, He died and he rose again on the third day, you will be saved. Therefore, it is through faith in Jesus Christ that gives you grace of salvation. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your name is written in the book of life. When we get to the judgment seat, they will not be looking at how many good work has she done, how many bad ones, which one is more. No! Then we look at the book of life. Anyone whose name is not in the book of life shall be thrown into the lake of fire. Hello? In the Old Testament, the book of life was open. Moses spoke about it. He said, God, if you will not forgive the Israelites, take my name away from your book. For the book of life is here. Abraham himself was saved by faith. 
That's what Paul was saying in Galatians. Abraham believed God. That's faith. And it was reckoned unto him for salvation. Righteousness. So salvation comes to us by the grace of God. Number two, forgiveness of sins comes to us by the grace of God. Number three, the mercy of the Lord comes to us by the grace of God. I want to ask you, if you know this man, he was a blind man. He was sitting by the roadside. He was begging arms, very close to Jericho. And when Jesus was passing by, he heard that Jesus was passing by. He threw away his garment and he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What's the name of the man? Can I hear it? When you call upon the name of the Lord, the mercy will come. The grace will come. That man received his sight. Everybody say grace. Can I hear you say grace? A rich man came to Jesus one day from a distant place. He said, my son is there almost about to die. He's at the point of death. Please come and help me. Please help me, sir. And Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. Yes, sir. He went back home. When he got back home, the child that was about to die was already wet. They told him, sir, the son is wet. The child is wet. He said, when did he become wet? He said, yesterday, the condition just changed. And he remembered, it was the time Jesus said, far away, I've come out of Galilee. Go, your son lives. Everybody said, grace. He was going to the house of another rich man called Jairus. The daughter was about to die. And the man was running, and Jesus was running. Let us get there before it is too late. And a woman just saw Jesus and spent all my money. A medical doctor, there is a drop of blood in my body. I don't have another hope. This is my last opportunity. Jesus may not have time for me, but if only I can touch the hem of the government, I can be made whole. She touched and she was made whole. Everybody say grace. A man died for four days, already stinking, and Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And the man was out and was loose. And you said, great! A woman committed adultery. They were about to stone her to death, according to the law of the Israelites. And they came against her, and they were asking Jesus, Rabbi, according to our law, this woman should be stoned to death. This is Sharia we are implementing here. We caught her in the very act, in the very act. In the very hour, and Jesus said, Anyone who has not committed any sin should throw the first stone. They wanted to execute her, but they all left disappointed because their conscience preached them that they had no qualification to condemn another person. And Jesus said, Go and sin no more. He saved their life. Can you shout, Pray? A man went and collected the properties that was due to him whenever his father would have died. A prodigal child, he squandered everything. And when he came back home, Jesus came and the master said, I received him back. And I hear grace. Grace is the mercy of the Lord. It's the mercy of the Lord. When you call upon the Lord, he answers you, it's grace. It's the grace of God that makes us whoever we are. That is what we get from God. But this grace, number five, he also empowers us, empowers us to do what we could not do ordinarily. Daniel had wisdom. Daniel was righteous. Daniel was a counselor. For many kings, it was the grace of God, unusual wisdom. Joseph could interpret the dream. He became a prime minister in a foreign land. That's the grace of God, brethren. That's the grace of God. God can make you wherever you are. Don't look down upon yourself. All you need is grace of God. And you can get this grace only from God. Oh, I love David. David said, you are calling me your excellency, but let me tell you, I prefer to be a doorkeeper, a self in the house of God, than to be called a king in the palace. And he knows that it is God. Who alone can make him whatever he becomes. What did he say? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the saint of my life. Who shall I be afraid of? When my enemies are my foes, they came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. 
I will not be afraid if war should rise against me. My heart shall not shake if a battalion shall rise against me. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord my God all the days of my life. For in the time of trouble, the Lord will be there for me. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. People are afraid of Goliath. King Saul was running away. All the generals and colonels and brigadiers were running away. And their brethren, this small boy came and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Insulting the army of the Lord. I will go. They said, You can't go. This man has been a man of war since when he was a youth. You cannot face him. He's a giant. And David said, I will go in the name of the Lord. He took catapult. He took stones. I don't know what you have in your hand. Whatever you have in your hand, every Goliath against your life shall fall today, never to rise in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't hear that. Amen. Amen. He said, you come against me with your sword. You come against me with your spear. I come against you in the name of Almighty God, the God of the armies of Israel. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are physical for the pulling down of strongholds. Say after me. One person in. Can I hear you? Shall chase a thousand. Two. Shall chase ten thousand. I, I am not afraid. I can handle one thousand. I cannot be destroyed. I shall not die. I can hear you again. Can I hear you again? I will fulfill my destiny. I will be great in life. I can attack a thousand. Two shall attack ten thousand. Can I hear grace? That's the grace of God. So the grace of God gives you healing. I am the Lord that healed thee. He will take away sicknesses from your midst and transfer them to your enemies. You throw me chapter 7, chapter verse 15. Grace gives you healing. The man that has been lying down by the pool of silver, 36 years, stood up and began to walk. The madman of Gadara became mentally stable again. Nobody went to and met Jesus and made the same. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He went about doing good, healing and delivering all those who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God is going home with you, and from today, never to leave you in the name of homosexuals. Welcome. Show them love. Adulterers, welcome. Show them love. Boko Haram, kidnapper, terrorist. Welcome. Show them love. If they give their life to Jesus, yes, they can get repentance. Saul was a persecutor. He began to have to yes. Mary Magdalene has seven devils. She became an evangelist and saw Jesus, yes. But brethren, be very careful. Our God is a consuming fire. Let us fear God. The same God of love is the one that is going to kill your believers. And they are saying, when you are ministering to them, show them love, tolerate them. That's not our own love. It's an abuse of grace. And that's what some of our people are doing in America. Allow the homosexuals. Let them come the way they are. No. I want to ask you a question. There were two cities in the Old Testament. At the time of Abraham, they were indulging in homosexuality. And God came down and he rained down fire and he destroyed them. Can you mention the name of the two cities? Did God tolerate them? Did God discuss with them at the conference? Did God show them love? My dear brethren, don't let anybody deceive you so you won't be surprised on the day of judgment. That's an abuse of grace. Anybody can come in. Our Christianity is holiness and righteousness. Without holiness, nobody can see the Lord. I want to tell you an example of such bad teaching is the one a man is teaching at Uyo. I will mention his name, is Abel Damina. Here are some of the things he said. Number one, 
يعني شنو يا الحكاية؟ تي لا كلمة تيم؟ اه وين جيسوس از؟ هيل از ذير از ا ليك اوف فاير ات بونس فور ايفر اند ايفر ذير از ويبن اند كراشن اوف تيت ذي وولفز نيفر داي ايفري سين اوف وي هاف ذير بات از هيل ذيس مان سي ذير از نو وي لايك هيل اور جاد از تو جود تو كريت اني وي ار جاد هيل ذات از ا هيرسي اند ذا مان از بيتين ات اند يونغ جيرز ار جوين ذير نمبر تو He said, your dress has nothing to do with your holiness. Therefore, dress anyhow. When he said that, come and see young guys at the University of Puyo wearing panties to church, wearing panties to the campus, and they were dressing in a very bad way. My dear brethren, you are the temple of God. You carry the image of God. The Lord wants you to dress like a decent child of God. You are a child of God. Come on, I want to tell you who you are. I will tell you, you repeat it after me. Say, we are. A chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. I am royal. I am a prince. A royal priesthood. I am called out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. I am a child of God. Under the grace of God, I will not abuse this grace. I will fear God. I will depart from iniquity. Heaven is my goal. I must make it by force. Can I hear Amen? Say, God is too kind. He's too loving. He cannot send anybody to hell. No. The Bible didn't tell me that. Balance your theology. Balance your Bible. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Live a righteous life. Without holiness, nobody shall see the Lord. You will have the Pentecostal power. You will have the grace of prosperity. But serve God. Everybody say, serve God. Serve God. Exodus chapter 23, verse 15. Always serve the Lord your God, who will bless your bread and water. You serve the Lord your God, who will take sickness away from the means of you. You serve the Lord your God, there shall be no barrenness. You serve the Lord your God, there shall be no miscarriage. You serve the Lord your God, the number of your days you will live, God have your death. You serve the Lord your God, your enemies will turn their backs on you. All your prayer requests and desires. When you serve the Lord, the Lord will grant them to you. That is the gospel we preach. We preach holiness. We preach worship. We preach read your Bible. We preach pray every day. We preach come to God when you sin. If you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, and we forgive your sin. I will remember them no more. We preach grace. But shall you continue in grace? That sin may abound. Paul says, make a night home. By no means. If you are dead for Christ, don't take it for granted that because of grace, I will go and sin, sin, sin. I will come again for confession. Don't take God for granted. This is the whole essence. My dear brethren, I am done. All we have said today, the grace is the blessing of God, the grace of God, salvation of God, healing of God, deliverance of God, provision of God, miracle of God. He gives some to everybody. He gives some to his own children. Once you have faith, you have salvation, you have healing, you have long life. Seek the kingdom of God and the righteousness, all other things shall be added unto you. These same glories will give you all you need. But God is the one that gives liberally. He loves you. He creates you to be a child of God. Others don't have the benefit. You are going to heaven. They have no assurance of where they are going to. Go and evangelize and bring them into this grace. So they will have forgiveness of sins and they too will enjoy heaven. As I am seeing you here today, I pray when we get to heaven, I will see you. Be on your feet. Father, let your grace speak for me. 
in every area of my life. Every problem that follows me here, all my family, they come to an end today. Grace of God, mercy of God, come for me. Open your mouth and talk to God right now. Talk to the Almighty God. Ask Him to give you fear of God. Fear of God. Fear of God. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, then opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If by grace you are saved, not by your works. So nobody can boast. You can change your life around and make you a new creature. You want to give your life to Christ, it's time for you to talk to God. I'm sorry, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins, O Lord. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He died for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept you into my heart and as my Lord and Savior, O Lord. Write my name in your book of life. By my confession, give me grace of salvation. Pray for the grace of forgiveness. Pray for the grace of healing. Pray for the grace of victory. Pray for the grace of promotion. It was grace that made Joseph to become a leader. Pray for that grace. Pray for the grace of supernatural empowerment. Ask for the powers of the prophets, powers of the apostles. You are living here in terror to the kingdom of darkness. Pray for grace that evil will not befall you. A thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand by the right. They will not, they will not come near you. Pray for grace. Pray for grace wherever you go and come. Accident will not be your portion. Kidnappers, rapists, evil, ritual killers will not come your way. The Lord will guide you. Pray for grace for marriage. My husband, my wife, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Come in the name of Jesus. Give me my partner. Let me not make mistakes in life. Give me happiness and hope. Pray for grace of employment, grace of success. In all ways, visa, open doors to all nations of the earth. Pray for this grace. Pray that the grace of God will be sufficient. Sufficient for you. Give thanks to God for answers to prayer. And I want to give you an opportunity. Ask God for something big you want him to do for you. I've come all the way to Abuja. This is my big miracle. We are prayer. Talk to the Almighty God now. What do you want God to do for you? Pray! Amazing grace. How sweet that's it. That saved that wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me, everybody. Whatever it is you have asked for from the Lord today, I speak under the canopy of grace in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your divine healing now. In the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural empowerment now. Receive prophetic also now. you. God bless you indeed in Jesus' name. I'm told just five more minutes we have. Anyone with any question? This, this, this was designed to address this abuse of grace. Once you are a sinner, you are saved, you can do anything. And so, because the pastor said you can masturbate, God doesn't see. You can divorce, God doesn't see. And you see them divorcing their wives, you see them breaking their marriages, you see them doing evil, and they are violating the Bible. God, is, see after me, God is no respecter of man. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Any question? Anybody? Come out quickly. We have five minutes. Come, come, take my microphone. Thank you. My name is Dato Ashadu, Ashadu, Bishop of Indonesia Diocese.
can celebrate our father bigger and bigger. Standing under the sun two hours and you are dodging the sun. Please celebrate grace. It's not easy. Now, with me, we are only taking just five questions. We have two here, just five questions, no more. So, at the count of and once it's five, we stop. That's three. If you have a question, please come. I do have a question. All right, that's three. The two more persons and we are okay. All right, let's start with this three.
homosexuals. The Bible is against it. Leviticus is against it. He said clearly, a man and a man shall not lie together in sex. A woman and a woman, lesbian, shall not lie together. It is abomination. If they are caught in the Old Testament, they shall be stoned to death. And if you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you will destroy those who do homosexuality. He said, a man shall not lie with an animal. It is a genetic confusion. He said, God will destroy them, and the anger of the Lord will consume them. Gay people, we pray for them that God will deliver them. It's a demonic obsession. And we need to pray for them. Don't join them. Don't let them entice you. If you go into it, it's a demonic spirit and they want to claim identity. That's the fact we are fighting the Anglican communion. There are some people, even ministers, and even bishops in the wise, who are saying they will be going, that God can allow gay. They are using grace, love of God, that God tolerates everybody. He tolerated everybody. Eh? Eh -eh. And he threw everybody and killed everybody in the time of Noah. Only eight people were saved. He will do it again. The whole world is a very minor part of the creation of God. Do you know that this whole universe, with Africa, with Germany, with Europe, with America, they are not up to one star in heaven? And there are billions of stars in the galaxy. So what are you telling me? That God will tolerate everybody, bring them in. He said, come out of there. Can two work together unless they agree? Don't even eat with them. You will not hate them. You will preach the gospel. You can handle them. Bring them to the man of God who will counsel them and who will be able to also do deliverance for them. Homosexuality is evil. Homosexuality is satanic. What God called abomination 5,000 years ago, he cannot tolerate now in the name of an abuse of theology called grace. So when you are loving them, it's the love of ministry to them. Preach to them, but don't join them. And all this nonsense they are doing in cities, going to nightclubs, having free sex, and you think that God does not see it. My dear daughters, don't propagate your conscience. Don't let any useless lecturer tamper with your virginity. Don't let them tamper with your honor. Preserve yourself for your husband. Preserve yourself for God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't say, and if you cannot join them, you will cannot be them. You join them. They are all doing it. You are not there at all. A thousand may compromise by your left, ten thousand by your right, if you don't be your portion. There will be no homosexuals among you in the name of Jesus Christ. So we talk about general grace. We talk about general grace. And we are comparing with the character. Now, I'm from a Muslim background. If I give a lot of grace. So Muslims are good. In fact, they are more good than even Christians. The difference is that they don't go to church. And if they die, what kind of grace will they enjoy? He's asking the question. General grace is, our God is so gracious to everybody. Whether you are a sinner, you are not a sinner, you are bringing free of time. Are you not bringing it? It is so not proving, it's not shining on you. We get the length of this free of charge, whether we are good or bad. That's the general grace. Nature gives us the grace. But he's asking the question, he comes from a Muslim background. He says some Muslims are even better in character than Christian. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is, is like a feeding rack before God. Our works of law and righteousness cannot heal us. Our salvation depends upon Jesus Christ. Tell this to all the Muslims. That mistake the Muslim. Muslims are good people. Some of them have good character, but two things they have that is wrong. Number one, they say Jesus is not the Son of God, and they are telling me, if you say Jesus is the Son of God, who is the wife of God? How did they give back to him? God is a spirit. Can I hear you say God is a spirit? God is a spirit. It's not only human beings who reproduce. So if a man and a woman wants to reproduce, they engage in sexual intercourse and they give back to a child. A man will need a woman to, repro to, to reproduce. Am I right? In the plant kingdom. Another category of creation. Do they get married in the plant kingdom? You take one seed of maize, you put it under the ground. Do you look for husband and wife and marry them? A single seed of grain, we go to the, to the ground, we die, telling you resurrection, we come out in a new body and give you thousands. If a plant on its own can reproduce, the God who is a spirit can reproduce. God says, this is my beloved son. The son says, he is my father. He says, I am the son of God. You know why Islam says he's not the son of God? That's the big problem. But the biggest problem with Islam is this. Hear me? The key to salvation is if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus died and rose again, you shall be saved. Romans 10, 10 to 13. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Quran says Jesus didn't die. He took away the key of salvation from them. So their righteousness is good for humanity. It counts nothing in heaven. The best of Pharisees is good for humanity. 
have nothing for heaven. So brethren, your good character is demanded of you. Your fruit is demanded of you. But that is not sufficient. You need your faith that Jesus died and rose again. Muslims don't believe that Jesus died. Excuse me. Jesus was killed openly before everybody. A thief by the left, a thief by the right. Even the brother was there. People were there. Soldiers were there. Somebody tried him at the court, called Pilate. How can Islam say he didn't die? Because they know the death of Jesus is the key to salvation. He didn't want them to make heaven. He took away that key from them. Tell the Muslims we love them. Tell them they are children of Abraham. Tell them to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Tell the communists, China, Russia, all of them. Oh, Jesus is the only way. As chapter 4 verse 12, there is no other name given over heaven. Then you can be saved and say the name of Jesus. I'm too proud you are the owner of this name. I think our time is gone. Can we take them? Forever you are the 
Sam. I got my true gift. 